So thank you. Thanks for coming to my talk today. I've decided to entitle this talk, The Fluids of Evidence as Trauma. So I chose this title in particular to include um, the exposure of bodily fluids outside of the body, so how they exist as evidence of trauma and how we look at and think about that symbolism. And also I want, I chose this title because of the results of mixing them with a photographic process and the um, possible metaphors of that. So a sort, short kind of summary of my research uh, is that this, well, particularly the series that I'll be presenting today is from a collection of artworks from my doctoral research. So within this research, I use uh, experimental methodologies through my art practice as a way to generate greater empathic perspectives and understanding about childhood trauma. So one of my goals is to create a visual language that can discuss the complexities of trauma, these kind of really intense kind of embodiments of trauma that last throughout somebody's life, but I'm trying to find another way of discussing it without using um, commonly used kind of cultural stigmas associated with that. So my objective for today is to discuss how I arrived at my experience of enacting one of my research methods, uh, which uses my own bodily fluids um, and combining them and adding them with the collodion wet plate process as a metaphor about how childhood trauma is embodied and referenced in the present. So as a heads up, uh, now just to let you know, there will be a couple of graphic images um, in this next slide. Uh, they are photographs from the American Civil War, uh, which was a kind of key reference and source material within my research. So at the beginning of my research, I concentrated on photographs of soldiers' corpses from the American Civil War. So this was a war that happened between 1861 and 1865 in the States. It was America's kind of first industrialized war. It was the kind of first opportunity for photojournalism of this kind where um, actual dead bodies were recorded instead of objects being used to symbolize these corpses. So in particular, the lack of humanizing rituals uh, such as uh, burial rites, which are typically used towards corpses to humanize them, the lack of these humanizing rituals in these photographs is what made me think of um, what happens in childhood trauma is a lack of humanizing, is a lack of whether it's love or compassion or it's abuse or neglect, how that's embodied and how that can actually form how we interpret reality. So at this stage, I saw the kind of viscous photographic chemicals of the collodion process as a metaphor about this disjointed nature of trauma. The collodion chemicals are really interesting because their coloring and how thin or thick they are look like they could be of the body, but actually they're quite toxic towards the body. And they were even used during the Civil War and even prior as uh, materials used to even heal the body despite their toxicity. So as a result of this kind of investigation into the American Civil War, using this aspect of the American Civil War as a metaphor, I developed two methodologies. Now the main methodology I'll be talking about today is about adding my fluids to the coating process and treating this process, so the glass plate that's used in this process as the final result instead of um, 
using it in the traditional manner as a way to make a negative and then a print comes from that negative. And the second methodology that I'll briefly mention is a performative approach of um, photographing a densely forested landscape by having my, bud, my body dragged through this landscape. So I'm documenting the landscape through um, a first person's perspective instead of like the Civil War photographs from a more distance approach. And these are the images that I actually use um, within this collodion process. So over the course of a few months, I devised a way to adapt the collodion process to function within a black and white dark room with artificial light instead of um, preparing and sensitizing the plate, putting it into a camera and using it in natural light. Uh, generally, the main obstacle in this was that with visual light, um, there were much longer exposure times, so for like over 10 minutes um, and things like that. However, once I had the, the collodion process stabilized and was able to get predictable results, I started adding my urine and stomach acid at different stages of the process as a method to disrupt the results that I was giving. So the intention was to disrupt this photographic realism of reality. So to make sure there were kind of minimal <laughs> remains in my stomach acid, I would actually only collect my vomit after several hours of no consumption of uh, eating or drinking. And however, with my urine, I actually intentionally um, adjusted the acidity of it by either overhydrating with water or dehydrating myself. So that would change the potency of the acidity in it. Initially, the additions of my fluids actually destabilized the photorealistic images of the collodion process. However, over time, I learned how to replicate particular styles, markings, and effects through um, ongoing problem solving, such as um, my vomit would actually create the harshest markings on the plates, whereas my urine would actually um, underdevelop the image or overdevelop it, depending on the acidity, and actually over time crystallizations formed as a result of the urine as well. So towards the end of my kind of few months that I had in the dark room, I was able to create a kind of predictable formula for this instability that would come up. So since a part of my research concentrated on how trauma can be remembered in a kind of disjointed, fragmented way through uh, whether it's bodily effect or emotional states or overwhelming feelings and even perceptions of reality and behaviors. I decided to keep a logbook about how my physical and emotional states changed during this time in the dark room. And I also kept another logbook as well um, to make notes about the technical changes that I needed to keep track of. So my darkroom sessions were about uh, eight hours long and they would happen about one to three times a week. And during this time, I also had regularly scheduled sessions where I would enact the dragging methodology as well. So these two methodologies played off each other and kind of really informed each other quite early on. There was a clear kind of, um, in hindsight, a clear communication and referencing between the two. So by consistently enacting a systemic approach towards my collodion process over a long period of time, I actually started to feel quite emotionally flat and almost like 
robotic in a way. The physical movements of having to do this process in the dark kind of became this kind of, um, there was less sensory information and it became more about muscle memory. Um, waiting times in the dark room were long. Um, there were minimal safety lights. So it was once again in darkness for a long period of time. And the process entailed kind of enough cognitive engagement and awareness such as um, I would have to either adjust the plate or burn in the image for a certain amount of time. Um, so I had to kind of be engaged. I couldn't like set an enlarger up, do the exposure, go away for, you know, however long, 10 minutes, 13 minutes and come back. It's something I just had to stay in that darkness for that period of time. So at this time, I started feeling numb and increasingly disjointed from my body. And this started to manifest in both my methodologies. This experience uh, really informed what glass plates I decided to keep as part of the series and which ones I decided to reuse. So in the wet plate process, uh, you pour the liquid collodion onto a glass plate. You slightly kind of tilt the glass plate around until this, li this liquid collodion forms this kind of thin, fragile skin, which is also surprisingly durable. And once you've sensitized it, exposed it, um, developed it, all that, if you're not happy with the, with the results, all you have to do is to scrape the skin off and you can start anew with the same glass plate. And I ended this as a kind of metaphorical contrast to trauma, which becomes kind of etched into the mind and embodied as remembered in the body through different ways to where it's, it is kind of stuck with you and you have to negotiate with it. So even though I felt a bit emotionally shut down at this time, my, um, my emotional world could be seen through, um, let's say, some of the plates that look like uh, an image had almost been regurgitated up through the body. The image itself took on these kind of physical, tactile qualities that were kind of implied, um, while others um, were a bit more minimal in detail and didn't necessarily read as images. Maybe they read more as bodily fluids. And actually, the colors that came up in these plates that you could see are actually photographic history. All the colors on my fluids were actually um, stripped from the plates in the process. And the kind of evidence on my fluids can be seen in the, in the markings and the consistency of the um, collodion skin. So, in other words, by using my body in a mechanical way for a prolonged period of time, I was able to create a kind of emotional state of mind that was expressed through symbols of an injured body. So this is once again referring to trauma and that emotional injury through these, um, for example, these images that look like almost bodily seepage like they've almost oozed out of the body in some way. So throughout this talk, I've tried to give a bit of insight into my collodion methodology, um, how I arrived there, how I use my bodily effect to inform this process. And by using um, self-awareness towards my emotional effect, I was able to create a metaphor that married the mechanical performance of analog photography with the seemingly sealed off feelings behind emotional detachment, which can um, arise as a result of trauma. So instead of 
concentrating on proving that a trauma happened, like um, like what happened in the American Civil War images. Uh, concern is about the experience of living with this trauma and the behaviors and emotions that kind of stick to you as a result of this, of, of trauma. So one of my concentrations in particular was about how trauma can resurface through bodily sensations, uh, emotional states, and perceptions of reality. So through a greater empathic understanding of other people's experiences, I propose that we can actually, we have the potential to enact the heightened degree of compassion and support and understanding towards others and ourselves. And if you would like to see the series and the rest of my uh, research collection in person, I do have a show at the Memory Gallery in London uh, from September 22nd to October 3rd of this year. Um, my website is below, my Insta is below. I will be advertising it more and more close to the date. But um, thank you, thank you for your time, for coming to this talk. Thank you for your, for your patience with all the technological issues um, uh, that, I, that we had in trying to resolve. Um, yeah, I had a great time. I look forward to any discussion that we will have after this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I hope to have to increase the trauma. Slightly <laughs> technical problems we have we had here today. Um, if there are any questions that um, you and anybody would like to ask questions, uh, I will try and read them off. If anybody wants to know, I want to know a little bit more of how you are presenting your work at the memory gallery. What sort of reprinting like last night? What is it called? It is going to be a whole combination of um, works that trigger the senses. So this series in particular, I will be um, presenting the glass plates themselves, but I've actually, um, in the last image of my presentation, there were these large scale prints of them that will be acting as a background. Um, there'll be large vinyl prints. So you'll actually almost be moving through the landscape of this, of these bodily fluids. Um, there will also be some works that are a bit more traditional in their presentation. Um, so there is some framed platinum prints. Um, there will also be a sound piece that came out of this, that came out of that experience of having to collect um, my vomit on a regular basis and referring back to these behavioral changes that happen as a result of trauma. And there will also be video and smells as well. So the video will be from those dragging sessions that I mentioned before. And the smells actually um, tie into those of smells you would find from a decomposing body as well. There you go. <laughs> Wow, this is going to be multimedia installation. <laughs> yes, very excited. <laughs> Excellent. Are there any, any other questions before we wrap up? And obviously, you will, I haven't checked the website yet uh, for any updates, but you know, will you do this in the video? This and audio is also on the on the website, just in case we can't talk. Yes, so the goal is to, um, while the show is still up, to do regular Instagram updates and walkthroughs of it, but also to definitely document it as well, um, so there can be a 3D experience. Um, and the video will be accessible once all the, um, once the show opens, kind of thing. There'll be a Vimeo set up and all that fun stuff. 
Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your patience and for the presentation. I'd like everyone to, well, to say thank you first of all again. And also want to add that I presented um, this, this piece in the publication. Mm -hmm. And this will be a publication for the um, Don President, uh, what Love Society is the Department Research Publication, uh, which will be coming out time next so it's if anybody wants to learn more about it as well you can do that on the public as well so thank you again thank you everyone for coming I look forward to seeing you all again in two weeks time for our next lunch thank you yes thank you so much okay thank you